Welcome to another uh, live stream Friday. I still haven't titled this thing very good. So right now it's just uh, live stream Friday. So welcome to another live stream Friday. Again, hour behind. I think I'm getting better. So uh, I try to do this every week. Friday's at noon central time. Uh, sometimes I have to delay it a little bit depending on work. My name is Cade. Uh, this is Retainer Designer Channel. And uh, I make retainers for a living. I own an orthodontic lab with my wife and my wife is actually in the chat somewhere so uh, be sure and say hi to her to her name's sarah without an h you know the right way anyway uh she's watching things on the back end make sure i don't mess things up so today we are going to talk phase one holly uh which many of you that are watching this probably know what that is uh those who don't i'll explain it uh and the best i can uh, we'll wait and let some people uh, load in uh, while we're watching. So, again, uh, this is a live stream I do every every week, and I usually have a duck cam, but this time it's something special. We have a a chick cam, and you can't see him very good. A baby chick cam. So, uh, the 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 fluffy butt, the yellow fluffy butt you see, that is Daisy. And the other one who's spazzing out over there trying to get to uh, the other chickens is uh, Ducky. My wife named it. Anyway, uh, that is our, those are our two newest ones. They are uh, just hatched. Uh, I think Daisy was hatched last night or the night before last. And if they'll get over to the right side, they're trying to get out, but we're keeping them away from, there's, we have two mama chickens who laid and roosted on some eggs and they they uh, oh, let me do this they they laid on some eggs they hatched some eggs and then these two were stragglers and they they were getting cold in the nest so my, my wife took them uh, played mama and put them in the uh, incubator and hatched them and now the mamas won't accept them so <laughs> that there we are so now they're kind of orphans, but she's raising them. We're going to give them to uh, her parents. Uh, they have some land out here, so they want some more chickens. So these are going to uh, her parents' house. Yeah, so that, again, that is uh, uh, the brown one is Ducky, and the, uh, the one hiding behind the grass, that's Daisy, the little white fluffy one. Anyway, today we will be talking, oh, and there's Pete, if you can hear him, I don't know if you can hear him or not, but he's crowing like he usually does during my, my live stream. I think I have uh, a thing for him. Here we go. Yeah, that's Pete. Yeah, that crowing like you, oh, there he goes. Yep. Anyway, today is a phase one holly. Uh, as you, many of you who are watching this kind of know what a phase one holly is. I don't know, uh, those that are watching from another country, I don't know what y'all call it, uh, but this is, um, a certain type of appliance we make uh, for a kid and a young kid we're talking like 7 to 12 years old uh, they initially start with braces try to align teeth the best they can and then the doctor takes the braces off to let the teeth uh, the, the remaining of the teeth uh, fall down or erupt so if I look here at this model actually that is kind of bright Oh, that, that'll work. You can see here is the, what we call the upper left six. It is the upper left first molar. Uh, this is actually an E. So this is a baby tooth. Uh, and this is a four. So you can see this is what we would call mixed dentition. Uh, these are all four our, uh, permanent teeth. Those are the adult teeth that came in. The doctor put, okay, Pete, we get it. The doctor put uh, brackets on there and, and put bands. And actually, you can see the remnants of an expander. So I probably made an expander for this patient at one point. So they, they went through phase one treatment, which usually means expansion, straightening these teeth, maybe shifting some teeth around so that there's enough room to have the permanent teeth uh, grow in. So there's still one baby tooth left. Uh, and... And then these are the first molars, and then that is the second premolar and the first premolar. And there are no signs of canines coming in. So I think well, there's one maybe coming in right there. So what we do is we make a holly that 
uh, we make a holly that will maintain the the front four teeth in their position, maintain the molars in their position, uh, and then if there was an expansion, it'll, it'll hold all that in position. It's a real simple retainer. I make a bunch of them, and I actually have two. One is a 3D printed one. Oh my gosh, Pete. And so here's a 3D printed one. You can actually see the canine peeking through right there. Right there. So, and then this is a, I don't know if that, I can't tell if that's a baby, I don't think that's a baby tooth. That might be a baby, baby tooth. Uh, so this is the first premolar. Underneath this baby tooth is the second premolar, and then there's the first molar. Uh, we don't see a first premolar here, uh, but we have a baby tooth there, and hopefully there's a second premolar under there. Okay, Pete. I think he hears me talking. <laughs> Diana, yes, uh, ready to watch. Hello, uh, I can hear Pete. Yeah, he he likes to make his presence known. Uh, and pair, yep, yeah, get him, Pete. He's I don't know if he's warning or he hears me talking or what, but uh, he just starts crowing the instant I go. He was quiet before I hit the live stream. I don't know what's going on, but so first thing we're gonna do. I think I have a lower third. Am I that fancy? I have a lower third for uh, uh, prep model. Yeah, here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is prep the model, meaning I'm gonna pick the bubbles, uh, wax out some stuff, uh, prep the molars for Adam's class, and, oh, I got the broken knife. Oh, here's a good one. And I also have this knife here. I'm gonna just lower the temperature of this light real quick. That should help see this better. Uh, so I'm just going to pick these little bubbles that are in in the sulcus of these teeth. I'm saying the sulcus wrong. I know. Pete. Oh, he's on the other side of the house now. Other side of the lab. And then this one actually has brackets still on. So the, the doctor has asked me to remove the brackets. So I'm going to use my... I like using this knife. It's a, a Buffalo Dental 7R Rosewood handle knife. Pretty much a staple in here in in a dental in a dental lab or ortho lab so you can see i just shaved that right off maybe i just need to take the lights all the way down there we go it's having a hard time focusing but i, I just what i do is just hold the knife up against the flat of the facial of the tooth and i just slide that gum pete I think he senses that I go live stream. All right, so now I've removed those brackets. It's pretty easy with the plaster model uh, to remove those brackets. So again, we're gonna bend a labial bow here. And I really wanna touch right here with the wire and right here with the wire and keep it up high. I don't, I don't wanna get it down here uh, right against the gum line. I want to keep it up high uh, right at the contact point right above the contact point right where the the This tooth when it erupts which looks like it doesn't have enough room, but we'll see um, This tooth probably has enough room to erupt So when that canine erupts, it's probably going to touch this tooth. So I'm going to try to keep that wire high So the other part of the design the clasp is Adams, which is pretty standard for these phase one hollies and so I'm just going to carve out a lot of this, these gums. And this is free gingiva. It's, it's not attached. So this doesn't hurt the kid uh, when they insert this. But I do need to get underneath the gums to get a little attachment, a little, little retention there. This knife is also good. Dang, Pete, I don't know what he's... We've had a lot of buzzards flying over lately, so he's probably warning all his ladies of the potential threat. All right, let's clean that up. Uh, I got this. 
clean up a few of these air bubbles. I don't think that's air bubble. And then I'm going to wax. Where's my wax? Oh, ooh, I just remelted it. So it's nice and flat. Hello, how are you doing? <laughs> Mahila, I, I almost want to say Michael, but Mahila is Mahila. Sorry if I'm messing it up, but good to see you again. So because this had an expander, those expander arms kind of push into the gums a little bit. Uh, you know, give this kid a, a couple days or a day without the expander in and all this will heal up anyway so i'm just going to fill it in as if uh the the kid has healed up already and then i'm going to just wax out a little bit of the uh the rugae here i don't want it to a lot of it's pretty pretty drastic looks like it might get some undercuts in there And I am worried a little bit about this. Can you see this? There we go. That's a good view. It, 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 this papilla here looks a little smushed. Uh, I don't know if the impression did that or if that's natural. I'm going to put a little bit of wax there just to kind of, uh, just in case it's been smushed a little bit. I don't want the, the acrylic to smush those down and make it uncomfortable. I'm going to put a little bit. in those areas there. There we go. And then I'm gonna use my, I'm ready for some separator. So this is my pink separator I get from JBC and company. Uh, it's silicone based, so it's really good. I'm gonna paint two coats. I'm gonna paint this one, I'm gonna let it uh, dry, and then I'll paint another one right before I start bending wires again. All right, so let's work on, so I like this because there's two different versions. I'm gonna add a little light because this model's gray. Kind of touch it there. Uh, you can see there's little pinholes in here that I gotta fill in, and that's mainly from my 3D printer. I guess there's dust on the, the mirror, uh, and so it's not curing, and they go all the way through. I don't know if I can put a light behind this somehow, but you can see can I put a light behind this? So you can see it goes all it goes all the way through. No, you can't see that. Well, it does look pretty cool though. <laughs> like a lamp. Mihaila. Oh, Mihaila. I like it. It sounds Hawaiian, and I don't know why, but that sounds Hawaiian. So I'm just going to wax out all these little holes that are in here, unfortunately. And that, that means I need to go in there and clean the mirrors or the glass on my 3D printer. It's probably on my old printer. Definitely, uh, and then you know, I've seen on my previous videos, I always put just a little bit of wax here in the posterior section. Um, so that way, whenever I do the acrylic, I have a little bit of a give way here to slide my knife under the acrylic to lift it off. Um, it just helps to uh, with, with that. Uh, this one did have brackets. But when my wife checked it in, she sent it to auto bracket removal, and that's kind of what it looks like when it comes out. Sometimes there's just a little patch. You can see the outline. Easy, does easy form remove braces or just bands? Okay, easy, if you mean easy RX? Yeah, easy RX removes the brackets also. It doesn't, it does bra bands, it removes that. Um, it moves, it removes if there was a bracket on here. If it did, it did a really good job. But 
uh, yeah, EZRX, it, it removes brackets. It does an auto bracket removal, which is, which is nice. Uh, I almost can't live without it. Uh, but sometimes I'll do this and I'll just need to touch it up a bit. Let me see if I have a, a burr here that I like to use. This is just like a cross, cross hatch burr. And it's got just a flat side on it. I got a blow on it. Hold on. Now just take off. It's almost like when they remove brackets, the doctor does, and there's glue left over. That's kind of how the auto bracket works. <laughs> yeah, I'm good with that. Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll have to put acrylic on here. So, yeah, uh, Perry, that that it Easy RX does remove the brackets. Uh, automatically off of this so this is what happened in this case so then I just smooth it up a little bit um, do you always have to relieve wax in the ruge area you don't have to I like to uh, this one had especially when it's really sharp ruge like right here anything that looks like it it'll, it'll create like a ledge and then the acrylic fills in on that ledge and then you're trying to pull it up and you'll on the stone model you'll just break the ruge off no big deal on this, you may not get the you may not get the retainer off. So it's Romanian. Oh, very cool. Okay. Hope hey, hope you're wearing your retainer. All right. This is my separator for 3D printed models. It's it's different. I don't use that same pink stuff. It's this is from Envision Tech. And I usually paint all over the place because you know you'll get acrylic spilling over. You get it on top of the teeth, um, you know. So might as well just separate everything. Oh, I did this backwards. I should have prepped the uh, bands first. I'm gonna let that dry and then I'll prep the bands uh, when I get to it. But so this one's already dry. There's little, little areas that are still wet. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put the second coat on. Let me show you the bottle this came from. Ba, ba, ba. Just in case you're curious. I don't know if that is backwards or not. JBC's best ever separator. So that, that's what I use for all my plaster models. This is what I use for my 3D printed models for right now. Always do, good, good. Diana, you're welcome, I'm not sure. Oh, for the Ruge, yeah. Yeah, you don't have to, but it helps separate uh, and you don't wanna get plaster Ruge trapped in the underside of the well, think about it. If, if it traps the ruge under, inside the acrylic, uh, and you break it off, what is it going to do when they try to put it on the fleshy ruge? That's gross. The fleshy ruge. Uh, what is it going to do? You know, is it going to irritate it or not? But if you wax it out, it, it'll be a lot more smoother transition. Let's see. Do I have? There we go. Uh, your handpiece, what type is it? I've been buying those marathons, but they only last a few months. Any advice? Yeah, you definitely get what you pay for. Uh, this is a NSK 500 or Z 500. Um, I bought this in 2004 and I've used it every day since. Um, I've only, I've changed the collet once and I think I had to get it rebuilt once. So, uh, I sent it to, uh, Garland Dental Services. Uh, they repair hand pieces. They don't sell this NSK Z500 anymore. They sell a different version. Uh, these, these are about a thousand dollars, but you get what you pay for. Um, I do have uh, that Garland Dental Services. I did buy one. I wanted to buy another one of these for my wife to use, and she got a Shizen, Shizen O2 Elite, 
And it, again, Garland Dental Services, I bought that from them. It was a pretty good price, and it's been just as good. But yeah, 2004 is when I bought this thing, if you can believe that. I'm going to type in there, NSKZ500. Now you can you can also find a version like Patterson Dental sold a version of this. It looks the same. Um, this is what it looks like. Let's see if I can pull this up without knocking things over. You can see it's how old it is. But I, the marathons are good, I think, just for um, doing like what I do here at the table, a marathon would be good. Just a little bit of, mm, 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 you know, prepping things, but like grinding retainers all day long. No, I don't think you, you'll burn it out. Um, have you ever accidentally broken retainers before starting? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, that goes along with waxing at the Rugae where I didn't wax it out and I didn't do a good job painting the 3d model. Try to pry it off and it breaks breaks in half so what i gotta do i just gotta start over i either try to repair it but i don't want to give the patient a repaired retainer right i want to give them a brand new one so usually that means i have to start over i'll probably strip off all the acrylic uh readapt the wires back on here redo it yeah that's that's one of the things that's called a remake uh internal remake is one that something happened to it in the lab and the lab has to remake it before it goes out the door it really ham hampers your style uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, many times it happens. If, if someone says it never happens, then I don't believe them. <laughs> okay. Maybe zoom out a little bit. Okay. So what I do is I use O three O wire. Again, I get it from JBC where I get all my colors from. Uh, I like to use. 030. I don't know what gauge that is. Uh, usually someone in the chat knows what gauge that is uh, for those that are uh, overseas. Uh, but I want to say 7 gauge or something like that. I could be wrong. Let me get this into the picture. There we go. And measure off a little bit of space. And I bend this way. I have seen people bend this way. I mean, it doesn't really matter whatever you feel comfortable with. I've just done it like this for years. And then to check the height of it, I'll bend it forward toward myself. So you can kind of see if I do it here. That's how I check the height of this thing. There are a couple ways I bend these loops. Again, I, I want kind of, I try to get it right in the middle of the lateral because I do want it to touch the lateral to help control it. And so I'm going to just grab it on the inside of my mark, bend to 90. And then I have, like I said, I have a couple options. One is my handy dandy, my favorite. I got these from Great Lakes. Uh, these are my loop forming pliers, what I usually make. And I've even, um, I've even adjusted these or modified these a little bit because I thought the loops I was getting were too tall. So I've actually stepped, made a step down. So they're not as tall. Um, I also have these, which makes a big one, which I do like for the uppers when it's, I go over the canines. And I got this little one, which is a tiny, which is a tiny little one. Uh, so I think I'm going to use that one on this one. And I'll use the other pliers on the other one. Now, if I, let me show you what, what type of loop this makes. So that's the height of that loop, right? And it's probably good for those that are bending wire to do this. So you kind of know, you know, the height of what each loop is going to be and the width. That needs a little bit of adjustment, but you kind of get the point. I kind of did that fast, but you can see this would be kind of big. This one is about right, but I can also make it taller if I want to. I usually like them a little taller. It gives the doctor a little room to adjust. So if I use that one, then no, 
Let, let me show you my other pliers here. And then you get to where you like your pliers and you almost can't live without them. So you can kind of see, yeah, I got three different types of loops here that I can make from two different pliers. I got the tiny one in the middle. Uh, I got that big one that I like to use. It's nice and wide and not as tall. This one is uh, on the little of the tall side, but you notice I had modified it. So let me show you what, I have another set of the same exact pliers I did not modify. So let me pull those out here. It's like they started making making these pliers uh, with these loops really tall, and I, I, it kind of bothers me. But you know, some of y'all may like to make your loops real tall, but I, I feel like it would irritate. So you can kind of see. Well, I can't see much of a difference. To me, there's a difference. <laughs> All right, <laughs> take my word for it. So it, you can see this one's a little taller than this one. Uh, this uh, this is a good height that I like. This one is the same height. It's just a little bit nice of a rounder thing. And then there's that tiny one. So we're going to go with that tiny one. I bet every colored language comes out. <laughs> comes right out. Sorry, I'm a Hey, I understand. I'm a, uh, I completely understand that. My wife, in fact, was like, hey, maybe I should take, I need a video, take a video of you throughout the day of you cussing about things and then uh, patch it together. You cussing, blah, 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 bleep, bleep, bleep. And then, hello, welcome to Retainer Designer. <laughs> and uh, uh, do that. So, on top, I have all, I have the tall, yes, yeah, yeah, I, I, uh, I've seen some that are taller uh, versions. I, I don't like dealing with them too much, but I can understand them. It gives a little bit of an extra adjustment room. So I'm actually going to, I got that tight right up in there, and I'm going to slide up maybe two millimeters. So you can kind of see from that angle. I've got a little gap between the plier and the, the corner of the wire, and then I'm going to wrap that around the loop so let me check that on here and we're right there in fact I like right where it's hitting right there again I was talking before I don't really want to go all the way to the gum line because oh let me change my light on here I don't want to go all the way to the gum line because it's gonna um, it might trap there might be an undercut there I like to keep it right at the contact point or right above the contact point so I'm going to take that wire, I'm going to bend it over. And I'm going to, yeah, I need to put a little, little bend right there. I hear chirping. What's going on? Oh, yeah, they're over there getting some water. They're outside my window, so I hear them chirping. Then I just adapt this into the pallet. And you know what? I may not put my loop on there yet. I'll just cut this. And then I'll just cut the other one the same height. And I'll make sure that's in the same spot. Make my mark. Same mark. Middle of the lateral. Make sure I'm parallel perpendicular to the wire I'm not so I'm glad to check that there we go go 90 degrees put my pliers on there the small loop and I'm going to give it a little like a two millimeter space to get that same height now I can look at it and kind of see if I have them the same height Uh, this looks a little shorter over here. Let's see if I can. So to fix that, I'm just going to 
unbend it a little bit here. That's gonna see how it got taller. I just made, I just, uh, right here in the corner, I just made a little un, unbend mark. <laughs> That's official. And then I'm just gonna put my loop former back on and then wrap it around. So then I'm, a, I'm pretty close to the same height. Put this back on the model. I'm holding it in place over here, right where I want it. And so I can see now I need to, that one's not touching. So I need to put just a little bend right here to get that to adapt to the facial. Where are my three prongs? Here we go. Slight little bend there. I'm almost touching here. Now you gotta be careful if you see a bulge where that tooth is gonna be, you gotta make sure that you don't trap that thing with your wire. Um, there we go. I think I like that. Checking everything, everything looks right. I'm gonna make my mark over here. Cause that's where I usually get myself in trouble is I'll make this mark without checking this side. And then I, it takes a few more minutes of adjusting to get this where I want it. There we go. So just adapting it into the, over the rugae that we waxed, Diana. And I think that should be it. Let me cut those about even. Ow, that got me right in the nipple. Ouch. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that hurt. <laughs> you gotta be careful when you do those, especially when you got other people in the room. So I have those, I've uh, trimmed them to the same height. So now I'm just going to make my little loops. Like this. There we go. And check my feed here, uh, here and here and yeah, there's a lot of things I say that probably shouldn't be on camera, but yeah, got to keep this uh, feed PG. Uh, uh, at the conference, I uh, uh, we have this wire bristle brush we use, and Sarah and I are always complaining because the little wires get in our fingers or even our shoes and our toes or or in our shirt, and it bothers us. And uh, my friend Brandon, who owns a lab in Utah, he was like, "Yeah, we call those MFers," and you know what that means. But they're like, "Oh, I got a MFer in my wrist." <laughs> I thought it was hilarious, but yeah, that, let's see, am I in the right section here? Done, okay, save. Hopefully that didn't glitch my stream here. Okay, so, so we got that fixed. We got the labial bow on there. Let me uh, wax it down. I do have a, it is kind of, Flaring out just a bit. I'm gonna tuck it down. Where are my favorite pliers? Do, 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 do. Is it? Nope. Hold on, let me put you on the duck cam. I gotta go find my pliers. Okay, I found them. Did I say duck cam? Baby chick cam. Sorry. Old habit. So I'm just, I, I got these tiny little three prongs that I love to use. Oh no! Goss forever! There we go. Okay, good. 
so I have these uh, two different types and I use both of them. This one uh, uh, makes more of a gradual bend. This makes a really sharp bend and I can get them into tighter places and stuff. So I really like those. So I'm going to put my labial bow back on and let's wax it down. Again, I'm touching right where I want to at the, at the right at, above the little, like where the contact's going to be. I, I didn't put the wire down low. Let me see if I can get a good zoom on that. So you see I'm not at the, um, the joint between the, the gums and the tooth. Uh, it's right there. Come on. Oh, I didn't know it did that. Yeah, there we go. So now, Adam's class. Now, I'm out of 8 millimeter Adam's class, so that means i, I got to bend my own. So let me uh, get um, some 028 wire. And I usually like to go at the top of each cusp tip right here and right here, and I like to draw straight a line straight down. So then, I usually cut a piece maybe, I don't know, 3 inches long or so. It's a little bit longer than three inches, but that should work. And then I'll mark it right at those lines. And then proceed to bend. I'll put my uh, bird beak right on the inside of that first mark. Bend it a little past 90. 90 plus. Bend it a little past 90. You know, 90 plus. And... You can see how they're kind of angled toward each other a little bit. If I wouldn't have bent that, they'd be toward each other. Make sure they're flat. And then I tuck my bird beak in like that. And I'll wrap the wire around the round part. So then it makes a U. So the, yeah, this is, uh, the Adams class is one of my most popular videos and I made that years ago but people are still using it and I still bend them the same way so you can see it, the, the the 45 degree angles are still bent in there let me double check make sure I got my measurements right yeah that's pretty good so now I'm gonna bend it down bend it down and then I got a Adam's, happy little Adam's clasp. There I am. Bob Ross is what my name. That's a happy little Adam's clasp. So, see, I've been, this is a preformed 8 millimeter, and this is a Cade made 8 millimeter. So, I got pretty close. So, now we'll just adapt this down. There is a little schmutz here little drag mark from the impression so I'm just gonna clear that off just I know some that they always clear this off distal to the six and because uh, there's always a little bit of puffy gums so bend that back around again same concept as with up here on the uh, the upper two uh, you know, making room for that three, that canine to come in. I want to do the same thing here. I don't want to bury this wire between the two teeth, which causes that to, um, oh, it's so bright, which, which will cause that to keep those teeth separate. So I'm going to keep it up high. Probably I'm going to try, try to keep it right up here, right there, instead of in there. Bend that, oh. and I keep putting it back. And wrap this around the tooth just a bit. Now I'm at the end of the gum there, so I'm just going to bend it down into the palate. Sorry, that's so washed out.
just bending away. Just, uh, you know, I, I keep putting it back on the model. I'll hold it like this. Um, and I just get all those wires all lined up nicely into the roof of the mouth. I'm gonna go ahead and cut them short. I usually cut them uh, wherever this is. It's almost like I'll just draw a straight line from that and just hit it right here and here. And I'll cut that. Clip this into the trash this time and not onto my body part. Oh, that thing went way over there. And then I'll just, actually I'm just gonna leave that like that for right now. I do like to lean this a little anteriorly. So this side, you don't have to worry about, you can put it down on the gums if you want. This this molar is probably not gonna come in for a while, uh, this 12 year molar. But uh, do like to keep that high on this end, just in case, so this will, can finish erupting. You don't wanna trap this. And that's the, the fun, that's the function of these phase ones, is to hold the, the permanent teeth in place as the, the uh, rest of the permanent teeth, mainly the bicuspids, come in and drop into place, and uh, cuspids. Uh, so they've done expansion on this case. If you're just now tuning in, that we're making a phase one holly. This this patient has already uh, worn phase one, and most regular hollies I make on this channel are phase two, meaning that they're they're completely done with their orthodontic treatment, and they're just holding to uh, retain the teeth so they don't shift and move. Um, and double check, make sure it matches that side. I'm gonna make my Adam's clasp real quick. I went slow that first time, so if you missed it, you can back it up. But yeah, this is a phase one holly, mainly just to hold the front four anterior together. They they had brackets on this one that I shaved off. Where did my pin go? Oh, here we go. Start adapting this. And I notice I'm holding it like this also. So I'm working on this side. I don't necessarily hold it a lot like this because I, I bend with this hand. When, I, when I'm on this side, I can hold it with my left hand. And be, I don't know. That's just how I notice I do. There we go. So let me cut these short a little bit. So I can start going down. Notice it's it's hitting this side over here. So I, I usually just cut it a little short. Dang, I'm dangerous with that today. Okay, so now if I if I go work from the side, the buckle side of the mouth, I hold the the wire different. I just realized that. A lot of things you self-analyze whenever you film yourself. Uh, and I, I suggest everybody on the channel start uh, filming, filming yourself, timing yourself too. That's another uh, key component. Maybe I'll do a video on that one day, is uh, how to time yourself. Uh, if you want, ever want to get faster, you start timing yourself. You get a stopwatch, which everybody has one on their phone now, and you just sit there and you're like, all right, ready, start. And you time yourself bending a labial bow. And you know, you, you push stop once you get it waxed on. And that really helps speed up how many you can do. Again, you're gonna have to, you know, no distractions. Like I'm distracted right now because I'm, you know, doing the live stream. I'm talking to you guys and girls. There we go. That one's a little bit longer. I'm gonna cut it just a little bit short to match the other side. I have a trash can beside me and it's got a flip up lid. I try to use that as a backboard, but sometimes they come off pretty powerful. Again, you put your own zigzag doodads in your wire, make it your own, put your initials in there. Mahila could do that. You could do an M and it, that'll work. Let me adjust this a little bit. There we go, I like that. So you wanna make sure you're touching. I'm not touching very good there, but I know I can, I can adjust that 
uh, in QC. So a lot of this stuff, if you're doing your own QC, you can kind of leave some stuff, uh, some finalization of the wire bending to the QC part. Sometimes the, the, the uh, wire bending is easier once the acrylic's on. And in some cases it's not, you just kind of have to learn that. So I'm actually, so my acrylic is gonna go this direction. So that's why I'm bending those distal uh, wires of the bulk of the atoms. I've bent them forward a little bit because I know I'm going to make a, uh, I don't do full, if I was doing full palette acrylic, I would just, you could just leave them straight. But since I'm, I'm going to be trimming them forward just for patient comfort and I'll keep it, they'll still keep it. A lot of people go full palette to keep the expansion, but this will keep the expansion. As long as you're touching this tooth and this tooth and they're connected together. Um, I'm actually going to wax that. That'll just in case. All right, so we got that one down. I put that in my case pan. I put it over here to bend wire. Let's, uh, or do acrylic. Happy little accident, that's right. Yeah, my Bob Ross came out. Uh, what are my retainers called? They are to move some of my teeth together. Okay, that you can have a Holly retainer. It's still called a Holly retainer but there's extra clasp on there or they can bend the, the labial bow in such a way that it will close gaps. So I can, I can actually, I've done it on these before. Uh, you, you take tinier wire, so this is thin wire like this. And you can create a little spring. Uh, I don't know what's in your retainer, but uh, I've made tons of these. And you can actually put a little spring in there like this, right? And then, where'd my model go? And then you can put it here. Uh, you can't see that. You can put it there and you see, it will actually swing the, the teeth together. So the doctor will activate it and they'll close the gaps. So yeah, that, you can, it's called a holly. Uh, but if you can add components to the holly, it's like adding um, things on your teeth. Uh, a tap, you know, we, when you order a car or, or something like that, you can get leather seats. You know, it's still a car, but it's got leather seats. So it's, it's just add-ons that can do different things. Oh, before I do that, I remember this time, I need to prep this for the Adams class. But as you can see, I can't carve into this with a knife. So I actually have to use this and I can use this thing, which is nice because then I can put it right against, let me turn up the, right against the, the molar and I won't go into the molar, but I can, don't breathe this stuff in guys. Huh. There we go. Let me blow this off. Sorry, it's gonna be loud for a second. Watch your volume. Okay. So I've so I've made that. So let me show you. There's another one. It's called a ball. What I call a ball burr, half round burr. And it'll do the same thing. Those, those are two different types that you can use to do, to do that. Get a mask, right? <laughs> Get a mask. So what I do is a little trick while you're doing that blow on it and it'll keep it from going to your face. Again, best thing to have is suction. Uh, second best mask, if you don't blow on it, make sure it goes away from you. So let me put a second coat of this separator. Again, paint the inside first, and then I'll paint the outside with the excess. And that, that just helps clean up 
any spillover or anything like that in the acrylic. So while that dries, Mahila, Mahila, if I'm saying that right, I got something neat for you. Now, if you're going to move teeth, uh, like if you don't wear your retainer, your teeth will shift back. It'll, it'll try to go back to where it was before your 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 teeth. Excuse me, before your uh, before you got your braces. So at the conference I just went to, we learned about this Inman aligner. And so, ooh, let me turn off the light. So this is someone, you know, after they get the braces off, their teeth are nice and straight. They don't wear the retainer and then they get cricket teeth. And so you see the cricket teeth on there. So what they do is they'll take an impression of this. The lab will straighten them back to where they were on here and they make a retainer and you see all the little contraptions on there. So these will actually squeeze down, if I can hold that right. And you actually make it on the corrected model so that when you go to put it on the crooked teeth, it will push against those teeth. So you can see this, it's pushing against that tooth and it's pushing against that tooth and the inside's pushing against this tooth and pushing against that tooth. And then over time, it's gonna squeeze them into, into straight. So this is called an Inman line. So yeah, there are other types of Hollies. Um, another thing that will do this is called a spring liner. Uh, I have uh, some live streams of making my own spring liner for my, for my teeth, trying to close my gap. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can have a holly with just, you can reset a tooth, you can put a spring on that tooth, uh, that kind of thing, or you can make something really fancy like this. And this is really popular in Europe uh, instead of doing something like Invisalign. They just wear this all day long. There's not multiple trays to wear. They just wear that and uh, just over time, as long as they wear it more hours of the day than they don't, they'll have straight teeth. But I thought that was pretty neat. So let's get back to business. Let's bend this one a little quicker like. So I'm gonna take my 030 wire. And I usually just go to the distal of the sixes, make my arch. I got that. So then I just mark it right in the middle of that lateral again depends on which loop former you want to use again i'm going to use my favorite one here which is what this is the the loop i usually use on lowers because those canines are just a little bit skinnier or a lot skinnier than the upper canines i'm bend this just a little bit over make sure i'm touching this distal of this lateral and then I'm going to bend it over as if I'm going over a pretend tooth because you're going when you do the acrylic on these you're also going to want to anywhere you're missing teeth you want to want to hollow out the the acrylic or make a, a space in the acrylic for that tooth to drop in because they're going to wear this the whole time their teeth are growing in which could be a couple years and hopefully if we've done our job right as lab technicians uh, we'll, we'll help guide those teeth right where they're supposed to go. I got that where I want it. I need to adjust the labial bow, put a little bend in it. Sorry, my model holder's a little squeaky today. Move up a little bit. I keep, I keep pressing on here. Make sure that my wire stays. Okay, get this right where I want it. And I mark it on this side, middle of the lateral. Take my bird beak, make sure I'm parallel. Because the worst thing is if you don't pay attention to how you bend this 90, you'll have one loop flared out and unlike the other. One of these things is not like the other. So, 
make sure I'm in the curve. Make my bend up. All right, let's see how bad off I am. Not bad, not bad. Definitely have to pay attention, you know. That's why I advise don't watch videos while you work, which is what I do all day. Watch YouTube videos. Learned something new from Steve Zara this week, if y'all seen that, where he uh, made a Ponic for an Essex that won't come out. So look up his video, Steve Zara Dental Lab, S-Z-A-R-A. Uh, I, I probably, I wonder if I can reshare it to my channel. It's really neat. I'm going to, I'm going to try that this week. I'm excited to do that. Uh, pretty, pretty neat little secret he shared with all of us. So I'm just bending this, trying to hold it in place. And I think I can curl over this over just a bit. Like that. I kind of land it in place. I can't believe that. Okay, Pete, you're starting up again. Oh, I hear the neighbor's crow. They're they're talking to each other. The neighbor's crow doesn't sound as the crow doesn't sound as yelly. Oh, hello from Russia. That's oh, great picture. I like those in the background. What what mountains are those in the back? That's pretty cool. And I cannot say your name. I am so sorry. You'll have to spell it out <laughs> uh, for me to say it. Again, I'm from America. We're, we're not good with foreign languages, obviously, but uh, we should be. I did take three years of Spanish, but that's not going to help in this case. And I still can't speak Spanish, so that wouldn't help if you were <laughs> if you'd spoken Spanish. I got people from all over. I wonder what time it is in Russia right now. It's probably midnight. You're up late watching, or up early. One of those. So I have those bent. I kind of they're kind of long, so I'm going to bend or sorry, cut off a little bit. Sometimes I'll bend, I'll go ahead and curl it and bend the other side, and then I never can get them even and it bothers me. What color is this gonna be? Luminary green, so it really doesn't matter, it's gonna be opaque with the luminary green powder. There we go. I like it. Hopefully y'all like it. Um, let me wax that down. So I'm touching right where I want to touch. Right here at the top of the lateral. Right here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. And then touching there. And there, it's pretty even. And again, after acrylic, I can... Pete, stop that. Those of you who knew, I have a rooster. His name's Pete, and he likes to crow while I'm working. Just right in my face, he likes to crow. Uh, so if you hear that, he's, he's out there, he's crowing. Sounds like he's yelling at another rooster across the way. But... Uh, let's see. Uh, Diana, oh yeah, you watched it too. Great video, yeah. I, I'm... Maybe I should make my own trying to attempt that or, or try to perfect it first before I screw up uh, a model. But these are kind of big teeth. I wonder if I can get my nine, my preformed nine millimeter in there. Nine millimeter. Sounds like a gun. Oh yeah, that fit good. Oh, y'all can't see that. So this is a preformed nine mil, nine millimeter. That just sounds, I'm meaning nine millimeters. That's still the same reference anyway 
So on the one before, uh, you know, I'm out of, I got some coming in, they're getting delivered today, some eight millimeter ones, uh, which is pretty much what I use 80, 90% of the time. Uh, but if I get a big tooth, uh, I can bump up to nines. If I get a slightly smaller tooth, I can bump down to the seven millimeters. Um, if I need a huge tooth, I'll just bend it by hand. So you can use preform Adams class, but it's really, really important to learn how to bend them because then you can you can you can adjust and adapt preformed ones really easy. Zoom out, zoom out. Y'all not seeing that at all. Okay. Now this was a Easy RX auto base, Perry, if you're still watching. So this was, uh, we talked about it, it was auto bracket removal. This was also auto base. And there's one thing that I wish it wouldn't do. It, it, it turns this, makes this corner a little sharp. Like I want it to kind of go straight from here to here, but I know it's trying to save material. But if I put a wire here, right? And then I gotta fit some acrylic around it. So you can see how tight of a fit this is. To the end of it so I just got to make sure I bend this oh no lost forever oh no I'm getting lucky two for two completely lost one yesterday I don't know where it's at it's somewhere and usually it's right after you finish bending it you're done bending it falls off the table bounces somewhere um, I don't know if there's a flooring that is ideal like maybe all white oh Pete Maybe it's all white flooring. So I'm not sure that, you know, cause it, it, I have gray flooring, which was, it's a pretty good neutral tone, but you know, the wires are silver. So sometimes you gotta look at a different angle when you drop them. I bend that up a little bit. Okay, this is gonna be a little tricky bend. You gotta pay attention. I'm gonna put this down here so I don't knock it off. See how this really high area back here? I almost want to say retro molar pad, but that's that's uh, behind the all the teeth back there. Actually, that's that's for lowers, I believe. Uh, I think it's a hamular notch. Yeah, those that have been to dental school, y'all let me know. And it's usually uh, behind the, the wisdom tooth or the uh, third molar. But I guess it can exist if you've got your 12 year molars taken out. Sorry, your wisdom teeth taken out. Be, be behind your 12 year molars. Now, let me cut this. I'm not liking this. Okay. Man, I'm not liking that. There we go. I don't think I can adapt it too much into that. It'd just be too sharp of a bend. Oh, Pete, Steve, you're here. We were just talking about you. <laughs> yeah, Pete, does he wake you up like in the movies? No, not really. Uh, I guess if, well, he's in the pen way back here. My house is way up there, so he's kind of far away from us. Uh, but uh, he hasn't. I've stayed up late working before, and he's he's. There he goes. Yeah, he does that. Called a C clasp. What what's called a C clasp? Uh, I didn't make a C clasp. Maybe I I don't I don't know what I said. Pete, he might be hungry. But what Pete does, y'all don't know this. He he finds a bug or something, and he traps it. And then he calls his ladies over. He does like a little dance. I'll have to film it for y'all sometime. He does like a little dance. And doo -doo -doo -doo, he says something. It's it's funny. And then he has them come and eat the bug. He gives it to them. So he, he goes and gets bugs and stuff, treats, and he gives it to his ladies. So he takes care of his ladies. He protects them. Does other things. We won't talk about that because that's uh, 
on the model. C clasp on the model. Oh, these are, I'm making Adam's clasp. Uh, yeah, these are, these are Adam's clasp. Uh, C clasp is more of a, I almost said C shaped. Because that's, to me, this is a C clasp. Like that. That's what we call a C-clasp, like this. Which, if you're saying what's on your retainer, then if it looks like this, this is a C-clasp. Now get in there, get in that picture, if it looks like that. And it just engages that undercut right there. But these are called Adam's clasp, uh, and that, that's what I made on both of them. So let me uh, shorten these a little bit. They seem a little bit on the long side. There we go. And then I'm going to just make my little bend. And y'all can do whatever y'all like, zigzag. Whatever makes you happy. You know, I'm pulling up my Bob Ross again. Happy little C clasp. Oh, Mahalo, you got me. Mahalo, you got me saying C clasp. I'm assuming. Adam's class was invented by Dr. Adams. Actually, I think I did do the research on that before. Really good for these. Uh, you'll see the phase ones with a lot of Adam's class. They just seem to do a lot better with um, molars that aren't fully erupted yet. C class are really for adults. Um, who have plenty of undercuts under the in between the teeth to engage this one uh, are used on teeth that pretty much are just erupted or pretty new and they don't have a lot of undercuts yet so this will actively go and get those undercuts now one thing about 3d printed models and I, uh, Steve, you can speak to Siliform. I haven't used Siliform yet, but I know um, the stuff I use, if I'm not careful, um, I, could, I can actually rub off if you tend to touch the model a lot. If you want to be ultra, ultra safe, you know, um, bend your wires. Uh, don't wax them on. And then, uh, don't wax them on and then, um, paint it twice make sure that it's nice and dry and then gently wax them on but uh, my the, I, I like to prep the way I do all my models so they're all ready to go so these are the two where'd my other one go oh it's over here ready for sprinkling we won't sprinkle them today we'll have uh, plenty of live streams to do that yep so there we go. All right. For trade, what was what are we talking about for trade? Sorry for the confusion. I mean, oh, I meant Adam's class. There you go. You're 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 doing good. Uh, yeah, you kind of. I was like C class, but I haven't done any C class. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that Pete's signing off. So with Pete signing off, I guess I'll sign off. I want to thank you all for watching. Uh, and, and, and visiting with me while I've been in some wires. Hopefully this helps someone out there. Uh, if y'all have a different way of doing this. Uh, I did have, I was, I ran out of time, but I was gonna do a, a rickets bow or a reverse loop labial bow, also called a pediatric bow. We, we shorten it to pedo, but you gotta be careful with YouTube. It's pediatric, we call it a pedo holly. Oh, that sounds terrible. I, I just realized it saying out loud, I might get banned from YouTube just describing what we use. But a pediatric holly, I guess, and it's got reverse loops. And uh, y'all give me a, a thumbs up down there if y'all would like me to do one on a pediatric holly with the reverse loops, which are unique. Uh, thank you for all the explanations. Yes, Diana, you're welcome. Uh, and thank you all for uh, participating and, and uh, having a good time. Now I'm going to go try and prep f and try to duplicate Steve Zara's video. <laughs> I'm going to, 
I'll send you a picture, Steve. We'll see how that turns out on my first one. I got one coming up, so I was excited that your video came out. But that being said, I'm going to sign off. Thank y'all so much for uh, tuning in, and I will see y'all next time. Uh, yeah, until then, happy bending.